Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Silkman and I'm from the Foul Play team. Uh, it's good to be back and uh, today I'm presenting um, uh, The Coffee with Foul Play uh, entitled A Serious Public Safety Issue. Uh, and if you're following this uh, by watching the uh, series, um, the material contained in this presentation is from um, Ma'am, Season 2, Episodes 4, 5 and 6. And uh, the presentation is entitled, A Serious Public Safety Issue. Now, if you remember where we left off last time, uh, we know that um, Magistrate Judge Duffin uh, had granted a writ of habeas corpus um, for Brendan Dassey and the state had three options to consider, either to release Brendan, retry Brendan, or appeal Judge Duffin's decision. Uh, now, if they retry Brendan, they can't utilize his March 1st, 2006 confession because it was ruled as being involuntary. Now, we know um, from uh, Brendan's uh, attorneys, uh, both um, Nyrider and Drizzen, they stated that this is where emotions run high. And uh, Laura Nyrider made the um, remark, uh, now there is hope that can still be taken away because the state has three options. Okay. Now, Magistrate Judge William Duffin had ruled Brendan Dassey's confession involuntary and even stated in his a very extensive report, and I quote, the investigators repeatedly claimed to already know what happened on October 31st and assured Dassey that he had nothing to worry about. However, um, as you can see here, uh, the Attorney General, Brad Schimmel, uh, he wasn't too impressed and he basically stated that, and I quote, he needed to find out what are the best options for the Horbach family. Now, we know that Len Kaczynski was Brendan's pre-trial lawyer and uh, Judge William Duffin had made several comments uh, in regarding uh, Len's performance. And uh, Len Kaczynski stated after Judge Duffin's ruling came out, he stated, I quote, I was surprised by Judge Duffin's ruling. And he also said, that's Brendan's good fortune. Uh, and uh, the final comment he stated was, Judge Duffin took a few pot shots at me. And uh, I think people who have been following this case uh, would not be surprised at all uh, in terms of the tactics that both uh, Len Kaczynski and Michael O'Kelly took uh, when they were trying to represent their client in quotations of uh, Brendan Dassey. So it was well within uh, Judge Duffin's right to take more than a few pot shots at Lech Kaczynski's performance. Now, of course, uh, once Judge uh, Duffin's ruling came out, uh, the media went into a frenzy uh, and there was a lot of discussion that took place, basically talking about uh, Brendan Dassey's overturned conviction and what it actually meant. And of course, they interviewed the prosecuting attorney, Ken Kratz. Uh, and uh, Ken Kratz, he was uh, interviewed and, uh, you know, he was very laxy-daisy in, in uh, his responses. But um, one thing that he did say um, that, and I quote, he was surprised to hear uh, Dassey's conviction overturned, but he did say something that was rather chilling. He said, the logical thing is to file an appeal. Now, Laura Nyrider, um, who's Brendan's post-conviction lawyer, basically stated, and we've gone through this, 
that the state has three basic options. So there are, here are the three options. Uh, the state can release Brendan Dassey, and that could occur at any time. The state can also retry Brendan Dassey, and if they do that, it has to proceed within 90 days. However, if um, the Attorney General, Brad Schimmel, wants to appeal the decision, it will now go to the Seventh Court of Appeals, and as a consequence of doing that, everything gets put on hold. Okay, well, um, as we can see, uh, Brad Schimmel is not gonna rest on his laurel, uh, and as we can see here, uh, the prosecutors are pushing to keep Brendan Dassey in prison. And so Brad Schimmel, the Attorney General, he essentially disagreed with Judge um, Duffin's decision. And as we can see here, um, the Attorney General, he filed a notice of appeal in the Brendan Dassey versus Dittman case. And so Brad Schimmel stated that uh, Judge Duffin, he was wrong on the facts and wrong on the law. Now we're talking about a magistrate judge here. Uh, and uh, as you can see, what Brad Schimmel actually stated. And the other thing, of course, was that the Hallbach family themselves supported the appeal. And uh, as we can see here, a very devastated uh, Barb Tadich, um, she stated, well, I was hoping it would come true. And that is that Brendan would be released and come home. Now, let's have a look exactly what Brad Schimmel actually said. Now, remember, he's the Attorney General for Wisconsin. And I quote, two state courts carefully examined the evidence and properly concluded that Brendan Dassey's confession to sexually assaulting and murdering Teresa Horbach with his uncle Stephen Avery was voluntary and that the investigators did not use constitutionally impermissible tactics. So basically going the complete opposite to what Magistrate Judge Duffin found. So now um, Brendan Dassey's case is going to the Seventh Court of Appeals. So the Attorney General is appealing the writ of habeas corpus uh, by Magistrate Judge Duffin. So now, as a result of that, uh, Brendan's lawyers, they filed a motion requesting that Brendan be released on bond during the state's appeal. Because remember, the state's appeal can take a long period of time. Uh, and so, the uh, lawyers for Brendan were requesting, okay, he can, he could be released home on bond. So in order to be released on bond, um, Kasia, who's Brendan's social worker, uh, she had to write a release plan for Brendan. And one of the things that she stated was that Brendan has a lot of trust. And it's probably that trust uh, in other adults is likely what got him into trouble in the first place. So Kasia had to write um, a release plan for Brendan. And one of the, um, one of the factors that's very important uh, in a release plan, and I'll quote here, Brendan will have a strong network of family support and professional guidance to assist him in his transition back to the community. So Kasia understands uh, all the major issues that Brendan will face having been in prison for such a long period of time. Now, what is interesting here is that uh, Barb Tadich made a very interesting comment and she wanted um, to talk to uh, Karen Horbach, uh, Teresa Horbach's mother. And Mark Wiget basically disallowed uh, Barb Tadich to actually speak to uh, Karen Horbach about what had happened. Now, 
as we can see here um, this is where Brendan was going to stay if he was being released uh, many people have donated many gifts uh, and many things uh, to the Tadich family uh, and Barb said this is where Brendan will stay uh, a nice safe environment and as you can see Brendan Dassey still has a lot of support uh, from family and friends and from the general community however uh, and I quote on October the 4th 2016 Wisconsin Attorney General Brad Schimmel files an opposition to Brendan's motion for release on bond and it's pretty clear that the Attorney General did not want Brendan released under any circumstances at all however um, Brendan's post-conviction lawyer Robert Dvorak had made the comment if habeas is granted that the person should be released but it's pretty clear that the Attorney General Brad Schimmel did not want Brendan released under any circumstances at all so Barb Tadich had made the comment all I know is that he's coming home so she had thought that Brendan was going to be released on bond and would be coming home however uh, the Attorney General Brad Schimmel and I quote here he filed an emergency motion to prevent the release of Brendan Dassey so for this particular case the Attorney General has become personally involved and wants to keep Brendan Dassey behind bars under all circumstances he does not want Brendan to be released and so and I quote on Tuesday November the 15th 2016 federal probation officers meet with Barb and Scott and approve Brendan's residence so they would have gone to uh, Barb and Scott's place uh, checked out where he was going to live uh, for the time being and they approved it everything was okay however on Wednesday November the 16th 2016 this is two days after the order granting Brendan's release on bond magistrate judge William Duffin said Brendan is to be released no later than 8 p.m. on Friday now the Attorney General had released the following uh, statement accordingly Dassey's release should be regarded as a serious public safety issue and it's amazing that with all this media coverage and with the personal involvement of the Attorney General Brad Schimmel there was a lot of activity um, uh, people were interviewed in the street and uh, people were very nervous and very concerned about the release of Brendan Dassey uh, and uh, he had been a model prisoner uh, while in jail while in custody had done very very little long wrong only minor misdemeanors and that's it all his records have been absolutely clean however in the talkback radio a lot of people were very upset very concerned that Brendan Dassey was going to be released and one of the comments um, that one of the listeners uh, on talkback radio said he's not a rock star he is a killer and so you know we're now comparing uh, Brendan Dassey to Hannibal Lecter the dangerous Hannibal Lecter and so all this um, um, fear and anxiety was being whipped up by the Attorney General uh, in the community on the imminent release of Brendan Dassey now of course Laura Nyrider uh, stated that it's very exciting news for the family that Brendan was going to come home uh, magistrate judge uh, William Duffin said nope he's to be released however a few hours later and I quote 
the state of Wisconsin files an emergency motion with the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago asking the higher court to stay Judge Duffin's order. And again, this is coming from uh, the Attorney General Brad Schimmel. And as, as the uh, headline states, a Schimmel fighting to keep Dassey locked up. And um, so it's pretty obvious that um, the Attorney General uh, believes that uh, Brendan Dassey is guilty and he should not be released. And um, here is the Attorney General, uh, Brad Schimmel, and I quote, I have to approach this from the perspective of the family of Teresa Horbach. They have no opportunity to hug her on Thanksgiving. We need to keep him where he is. And of course, he's referring to Brendan Dassey. So in effect, the Attorney General, Brad Schimmel, didn't care uh, what Magistrate Judge Duffin uh, said or wrote in his scathing report, um, he, uh, the Attorney General, uh, Brad Schimmel, still believes in the guilt of Brenda Dassey and that he shouldn't be released and he should remain in prison. So now uh, an emergency motion to prevent Brendan's release was filed with the Seventh Court Circuit Court of Appeals. So as you can see here, Brad Schimmel has become personally involved in this case and is doing his utmost to overturn uh, Magistrate Judge William Stuffin um, release uh, because um, the Magistrate Duffin said that Brendan should be released on bond. Okay, so on Thursday, November the 17th, 2016, this is one day before Brendan's ordered release on bond. The matter went before the um, Seventh Circuit Court and there were three judges. There's a panel of three judges. Uh, in this case, it was Judge Ripple, Judge Easterbrook and Judge Hamilton. And they stated that Brendan Dassey will remain in prison. So on December the 7th, 2016, uh, Brendan's lawyers file a response to the state's appeal of Judge Duffin's decision overturning Brendan's conviction. And both uh, Nye Ryder and Drizzen said, and I quote, Brendan has to stay in prison until his appeal is resolved. It was a blow. And uh, that's really devastating when you think uh, one day before his um, release, um, the Attorney General blocks it, goes to the Seventh Court, and they agree that Brendan should stay in prison. Now, I really didn't understand the enormity of the Wisconsin Department of Justice until I saw this slide over here. Now, if we just look back at Stephen Avery and his case, his civil lawsuit potentially had the um, chance of rocking this entire establishment, the Wisconsin Department of Justice, with his civil lawsuit. And just to show the enormity of the Wisconsin Department of Justice. There are uh, in the Wisconsin Department of Justice over 100 lawyers. There are 100 special agents and there are three crime labs. There's also the Office of the Solicitor General. So quite clearly, um, the Wisconsin Department of Justice is a huge organization. And so um, Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery, um, they've got to basically face, their attorneys have to basically face the resources of the Wisconsin Department of Justice, which is huge. So on February the 14th, 2017, the oral arguments in Brendan's case 
before the seventh court of appeal occurs in Chicago. Now, what happens is, is that from a panel of judges uh, of the seventh uh, circuit, <clears throat> three judges are chosen as part of the panel review. And the three judges in this particular case were both Judge Williams, Judge Rovner, and Judge Hamilton. Now remember, Judge Hamilton was one of the judges on the original panel that basically said Brendan had to stay in prison. And so this is the way it actually works. A lawyer from the Solicitor General's office will argue on behalf of the state at the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And in this particular case, it's Luke Berg. He's from the Wisconsin Deputy Solicitor General, and he's going to present in front of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Representing Brendan Dassey uh, is Laura Nyrider. Okay, so to the Seventh Circuit Court, of course, the Horbach family appeared. Ken Kratz appeared as well. Uh, Lieutenant Mark Wiegert appeared, um, and also a lot of the media appear, appeared as well. Now, I just want to point out that actually during the trial, uh, the media and their cameras uh, were not permitted inside the uh, courtroom. So we only have artistic impressions uh, of what took place in terms of pictures. And so essentially what happens uh, with such uh, an appearance, you're given 20 minutes to argue your case in front of the three judges. Uh, and Luke Berg uh, in his present state, pres presentation stated, uh, Brendan Dassey chose to confess. So once he gave his particular statement, uh, the trial judges would then asked him a series of hard hitting questions. Once Luke Berg had finished his presentation, it was uh, Laura Nyrider's turn. And she stated that Brendan Dassey had confessed on a false premise of leniency. And then, of course, uh, once she gave her presentation, uh, the judges then asked uh, a series of questions. Okay, now, of course, after the presentations, um, both by the attorneys, uh, Ken Kratz decided he was going to have a press conference and the um, media all surrounded him. And he said, um, in regards to Brendan Dassey, there was no coercion. So here you can see that um, the state is getting on the front foot immediately. So Ken Kratz during his press conference said there was no coercion. And of course, out of the blue, what happens? Three days after oral arguments in Brendan's case, co-lead investigators Tom Fassbender and Ken Kratz appear on Dateline. So their media presence has upped the ante already. And during that uh, press conference uh, on Dateline, uh, Tom Fassbender said, who of course interrogated Brendan Dassey said, I feel it was a real confession. All right, guys, and in our final slide, um, basically the panel, uh, once they hear all the oral arguments, uh, they get together and write a report and come up with a decision. So this is the final slide. So in order to get a decision, you need, so in other words, basically to win this round, uh, you need to command at least two votes. So two votes and you win, two votes and you lose. So you don't need uh, a three nil uh, voting. All right, guys, thank you for listening to the presentation. Uh, my name is Dr. Silkman, and I'm from the Foul Play team, and it's good to be back. Thank you so much.